go roaming the lands. And yeah, that's the basic situation we're currently in. Um, one more thing that I have to uh, that I have to mention is yes, there are orcs. This is an RPG, of course there are orcs, and of course they're evil and at war with the human empire. Um, that's all I want to say just for now. So let's just ask what we can do against this threat of the orc and and dragon army. What can we do? This time we cannot handle it by ourselves. Only the power of Innos will help us against these dragons. A group of paladins is stationed in the city of Corinus, not far from here. They possess a powerful artifact which could help us to defeat the dragons. They call it the Eye of Innos. You need to get hold of this artifact. Tell the paladins about the threat. You must convince their leader to support us. I will. I will. Um... What exactly is that, actually, that I have to get? What exactly is the Eye of Innos? It's an amulet. Legend has it that Innos himself was poured part of his power into this amulet. It will restore some of your lost strength and help us defeat the dragons. It also has some other hidden powers. I shall tell you more about that once the amulet is yours. Yeah, I mentioned the gods earlier. Um, the gods are not that important in Gothic 1, but they are definitely important in Gothic 2, so I'll just mention them very quickly at the beginning, um, because it's not really explained just now. I think you can only learn about the gods once you're in the city of Corinus. Um, so there is Innos, uh, who is like the, the god of fire, light and goodness and stuff. Uh, on the other side we have Biliar, who is the god of darkness and evil and stuff, so he's he's the one responsible for, for all this crap we have been going to, through. And in the middle there is Adonis, who is like the god of water and the god of balance and who keeps yeah, everything in balance between the other two gods. He's neither good nor bad. And Innos is, yeah, the good guy, and this eye is a magical artifact that uh, will defeat the evil hordes. So, that is actually a very good question. Why would these paladins give the eye to someone like me? Why would the paladins give me the eye of Innos? Because you are the one who is destined to wear it. How can you claim to know that? There are a number of reasons. The most important being, you have defeated the Sleeper. If you weren't a favorite of the gods, you'd be dead by now. Let's assume you're right and I'm destined to bear the Eye of Innos. How would the Paladins know that's true? The Eye itself chooses the one who may wear it. Once you get hold of it and put it on, the Paladins cannot doubt your words any longer. That sounds like a cliche and as if it wouldn't work. Actually, I never really believed in, in that working like that. Right from the beginning when I first played it, I thought this, this is so not going to happen. Um, but, I mean, we have to try, right? We have to be faithful. How can I get to the city of Corinus? How can I get to the city? Just follow the path from here through the mountains. The city is large. You cannot miss it, but watch out. The path to town is not without dangers, and you aren't nearly as strong as you once were. All right, um, old man, do you have weapons? I need weapons. I can only give you whatever little I have here. Look around in my tower. Anything that looks useful to you, you can have. Woohoo! Yes, thank you very much. I'll gladly take that offer. I'll be on my way as fast as I can. Good. And one more thing, don't tell anyone that you've talked to me. Above all, don't tell any magician. Since I have gone into exile, the Circle of Fire has taken me for dead, and that's a good thing. Chapter one. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that he is a previous uh, member of the Fire Mages, and then he, he decided to to leave them or he was thrown out I'm not too sure so that's why he became evil and all the fire mages hate him anyway so here we are in his tower uh, trying to get dizzy and 
We can talk some more to him, but I don't really want to. I think he, he will only explain some more of how to get to the city and whoa, that is creepy. Thank God he didn't turn us into that. And we can read a bit. Our reading is essential to get experience. Well, no, it's not essential, but I always do it because it's it's a cheap and easy way to get experience. Now, I won't read out all of the books because some of them just contain information on how to do a certain a certain thing uh, in this world, like brewing potions. That's good to know, but yeah, I won't read it out. And what do we have here? We can't go there. And a rune what table. with? What with? But we don't have the right item for what that. What with? What with? Just like this. But we can take this potion. Because he said we can take anything we find. Wait, is there something on this table? No. Nope. Alright, let's have a look around. Seems like he's sleeping here. So we can do that too. But since we are neither hurt nor sleepy, we won't do that just now. Anything on this table? No. Uh, on the stove, you can prepare food. What with? But we don't have any food. So let's just take this, which is our first weapon. And we will equip it. And can fight now. <laughs> okay. Very good. Now let's open the secret mechanism because I, I know about it and why shouldn't I use it? And this opens the gate over here where we will find some nice stuff. Another potion. This time it's a mana potion. And inside the chest we have quite some coins, our first fortune, and two scrolls. Very good, they might come in handy. Alright, let's leave him here reading his, his fantasy novels. And of course we go up first, because we don't want to leave the tower just now. He said we can take everything we want. That's like a hall pass. Thank you very much. I'd take the picture too if I find someone to sell it to. And we can have a look around. Let's use the mouse for this. Oh boy, that's pretty deep. Oh, that's going down quite Quite a lot. Oh boy, okay. I'm afraid of heights. Did I mention that? Let's let's go inside this room. Oh, did I see Yes, thank you. And more to read. Let's see, what do we have here? Hunt and pray. Every beast or creature has certain trophies that improve the wealth and glory of experienced hunters. An experienced hunter knows all about the trophies of the prey and how to gut them. Extract teeth. Teeth are the weapons of many beasts and creatures. If you know how to extract them from your prey, wolves, snappers, shadow beasts, sh swamp sharks and trolls, those are all monsters that uh, you can actually find in the first gothic part. And I'm not too sure if you can actually find swamp sharks in Gothic 2. Can't remember it, sorry. Uh, they are the best targets. Skinning. A talent experienced hunters value greatly for many animals have pelts, sheep, wolves and shadow beats. Shadow beats. Alright. Uh, for example, a hunter with this skill can also skin swamp sharks and lurkers. Extract claws, an art to be used on all kinds of lizards, snappers, lurkers, and shadow beats. Again, shadow beats. What what is that monster doing in the shadow? Like like doing the beatbox or what? This can't be a coincidence. Like, like why can you 
in the wrong way, just twice in a row. Anyway, we have a lot of reading to do in this part. And we get experience every time we read a new book. Is this the same book? No. Hunt and Prey. Every beast or creature has certain trophies that improve the wealth and glory of experienced hunters. Bloodflies. Two special skills are required to gut these flying devils. They are really annoying. They are they are so bloody annoying, these bloodflies. I can show them to you. We will uh, find some of them on our way to the city. Their wings can be removed and their stingers extracted. Both arts should be used by experienced hunters to claim their trophies. Field raiders and mine crawlers use mandibles to attack. Mine crawlers' mandibles are particularly valuable as they contain a secretion, secretion that increases magic powers. However, it should be used sparingly as the human body ceases to react to it over time. Mine crawler plates are also popular. They can be used to make armor. Armor with the U missing because this is all the American version I think although I I bought it in the UK this game seems to be the American version which you can actually hear from many of the characters they speak with such a heavy American accent and I told you earlier that there's only one thing I don't like about this game but that actually is something that that I really didn't like but it's only with uh, this in the English version because it just doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel atmospherical um, if medieval characters speak with an American accent. It's it's not logical. Why couldn't they use like like English accents or oh, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Anyway, can't do anything about it, and it's not that bad. I mean, it's still a great game. More experience for us. Uh, permanent potions. Uh, they require um, very rare ingredients like goblin berries. They are very valuable. So, yeah, if you have some of them, always save them. Don't eat lang uh, Don't eat them raw. It gives you permanent boosts too. But if you actually make potions out of it, then the effect is much much better. Yeah, but. We can't use that just now. Maybe later if we know a bit more about alchemy. Ah, the island. Now that is interesting for us. The harbour city of Corinis lies on an island off the coast of the kingdom Brutana. The island owes much of its fame to the Valley of Mines. Its reputation is dubious as for many years a magic barrier spanned the entire valley which served as a prison for all convicts of the realm. Now this is interesting. The, the magic barrier just crashed 13 days ago. And this book already talks about it in the past. So whoever wrote this <laughs> just published it. This is like like the newest published uh, version of this book. So, <laughs> okay, interesting. They are very fast in, in this world to write books. Uh, thus the valley became a prison colony where the convicts mined the magic ore far below the ground. This magic ore actually was important in the war against, um, against the orcs. Um, because from this magic ore you can... Um, produce magical weapons um, which the humans needed in the war against the orcs uh, still the war isn't going that good for us it's it's still ongoing this war this whole um, army of darkness is, is part